Hey, Keith. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, Keith, can you introduce yourself for everyone? Sure. Um, also, I saw a Penske truck drive by here, so thank you very much for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> All my questions nice are truck related, and no. uh, I'm really nervous now. We're, we're <laughs> so, all set. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Keith Zanardi. Uh, I run virtual events, hybrid events, and uh, some in person for Penske Media. Um, we're a collection of trade pubs. Um, I don't know if that's up there, but yeah. So there's just a couple. Uh, <laughs> but we are an acquisition business. Um, we focus on, on big events, um, the ACMs, the Billboard Music Awards. Um, Power of Women, um, and then we have a festival business as well. Uh, South by Southwest, we focus on uh, the American Pavilion at, uh, at Cannes, so we're there right now. Yeah, actually, so very cool. I'd like uh, if everybody could raise their hand if they've either attended or watched any of the events that are up on the screen here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so just about everybody. Um, and then, could you raise your hand if you've ever attended a Swugo event? Right, that's everybody. There you go. I think we're winning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one big thing, one thing that's very similar with all these different brands uh, is their ad-supported media. Yep. And for a lot of uh, event pros, the, uh, the way that they get revenue from their events is through sponsored content, whether that's sponsored speakers, so on and so forth. I'm curious, as somebody who's around hundreds of these types of events, how do you make that sponsored content uh, tangible uh, and helpful for um, the audience? It's a good question. Um, Thank you. So we, <laughs> we, have, uh, we have a pretty big collection of trade pubs. Um, so we do have a lot of uh, sponsored speakers and whatnot. Um, I think the main, the core of this is be interesting and be relevant. Hmm. Um, you know, the, that's, that's kind of the crux of the whole thing. Um, you know, don't get up there and, and make a product pitch, but talk about the, the business problem or the industry problem that, that you know, this, this topic or conversation is gonna, gonna really ultimately solve. Like make people smart, make, make them look smart in their next meeting, yeah. uh, at the next cocktail party they go to, depending on you know, if it's a lifestyle brand or. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about how you approach those different brands? So there's brands who are lifestyle, there's sports, there's um, yeah. like business, so on and so forth. Sure, so uh, we do a lot of different types of events, um, everything from uh, screenings for the Emmys to thought leadership for sourcing journal, um, to fashion, to cars, yeah. uh, you name it, we kind of cover it. So we cover 124 million people uh, on web per month wow. and 110 million people on social. Wow. So our reach is, is pretty large. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So you have a massive reach. I'm curious of all those folks, I'm sure you've seen like a lot of data and stuff like that about like what really moves the needle mm. on specific content. Can you talk a little bit more about like audience behavior? What have you seen really attracts people to attend different sessions and engage yeah. um, and really want to interact with your brands? Yeah, I think another, another point to make is that, you know, with, if you have a sponsor like um, Netflix for a screening, say, you know, you've got Emmys coming up, um, people expect that sponsor to be a part of that conversation. Hmm. Um, they want the cast, they want the crew. Um, that's the talent for that type of event. But if you have, say you have a, a thought leadership event, you've got a CEO and then probably industry experts surrounding them. Mm -hmm. um, so curation in that regard is really important. Um, and then finding, sort of finding that middle ground when it comes to lifestyle and some of the other types of brands yeah. um, and marrying them sometimes makes a really good product, to be honest with you. Yeah, so do the brands do like interplay with one another? And yeah, like that? yeah, interestingly enough, um, we are there. Okay. <laughs> uh, but no, we have, um, for instance, Variety and Sportico who launched huh. during the pandemic, which is another really, really good story. Yeah. Um, they partner on events, Rob Report and Sportico, same thing. Totally. Um, so yeah, it's been a it's been a really nice you know mix in that regard. Yeah, for sure. How have you uh, noticed like how do you keep like the core of each of these brands? Because brand is so incredibly important to each of these groups. Um, how do you make sure that your brand like stands out um, and is is like true to the brand uh, with each of your events? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I give a lot of credit to my um, to the brand teams. They a lot of them have their own event teams within. Mm. Um, and they, you know, as much as I am aligned with content, um, they're really the driver behind that, and they do a really nice job of preserving the brand and, and making sure that what we, 
the product we put on stage is what our audience uh, expects. Yeah, totally. Um, and I think that that's also a big um, like credit to our audience marketing team too. For sure, for sure. So put the like experts in the driver's seat for that. For right? that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it'd be impossible, I think, to like be a brand expert on each of these, you know. Yeah, it, so. it can be. Um, you know, it, and the hardest part about that is being, you know, with the acquisitions, even rolling through the pandemic mm -hmm. and whatever. Um, it, with it being a slow drip, it really didn't. Uh, it wasn't like someone's throwing the kitchen sink at you. Totally. Um, so I did have some time to get to know each brand, which yeah. is which is really great. Um, you know, one of the bigger ones, our, our recent acquisition of Dick Clark Productions has been um, in the media and whatever, but uh, the way that we collaborate with them from a production standpoint to drive some of our real staple core events yeah. is gonna be really interesting and something to keep your eye on. Yeah, for those who aren't familiar, can you explain a little bit more about what Dick Clark Productions is? And Yeah, so we, uh, Dick Clark Productions does like Rocket New Year's Eve in New York City. Uh, the Academy of Country Music Awards that we um, recently just did a couple weeks ago, um, the Golden Globes. So okay. as as we build those uh, <laughs> award shows, and uh, we reach a lot of voters. Yeah. So you know that's that's become a really big market for us. So like award show voters. And award show voters. Yeah. 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 So how does how does that work? How do you? Um, yeah. Yeah. How do you put together content for those specific voters? So, again, the brands are really good at that, um, mm -hmm. and they come up with these, you know, you know, I guess together we come up with these franchises, which is really important. Yeah. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, the, the content being driven is, is really credit to the, to the brand side. Yeah, for sure. For a while there, we were talking about reach. Everything is about reach, like the, the number of folks you can get. But I really love that example because it's such a targeted population mm. and like going deep into that, like one targeted population of award show voters. Yeah. Um, so the- I Actually talk about how, how we yeah. uh, organize that within Swugo actually. So it's just a good point for, for me to discuss that. So the, uh, we, what we really were lacking um, in, in the first year of the pandemic was a, as close as we could get to an all-in-one solution mm -hmm. uh, because we had a diverse set of brands and you know, we, we wanted uh, commerce, so the ticketing, we wanted white label pages, we wanted to be able to build our own web pages seamlessly. Mm -hmm. um, and really the payment gate and, and the self-service was huge for us because once we put the brands into mm -hmm. you know, the training and got them up to speed, it's, that makes what well, makes my job easier, but it also, yeah. you know, it gives them the creative freedom and and freedom with the content to to really make it their own. Totally, totally. So a lot of these folks are legacy brands, you mm -hmm. know, and a lot of these folks are relatively new. Um, and so with a, a lot of legacy brands trying to pivot into like streaming uh, and like new forms of media, can you talk a little bit about your team's like streaming efforts, uh, mm -hmm. touching on Harmony Streaming? I know that was something your team launched recently. Yeah, so we um, recently just launched Harmony, uh, which is a proprietary streaming um, platform. Um, we're using it to amplify our, um, our larger set of events like the Dick Clark Productions, the award shows, um, and ultimately festivals, I think. Um, but right now, it's, it's really being driven um, by the award shows. But mm -hmm. uh, July last year, I think it was, um, streaming for the first time passed um, TV viewership. Hmm. And so that sort of spoke volumes to us. Yeah. Um, and so this effort is to really, is to focus on reach, and then if we have to kind of narrow in on you know, totally. curation of content and, and whatever, as soon as we know what that means, other brands will <laughs> participate as we get down, you know, totally. down the funnel. So the idea is that you're able to stream across these different brands. And yeah, so we're really using our own network um, and multiple other uh, sources to, to really drive people and eyeballs um, towards these, you know, these staple events and legacy events, like you said, yeah. but they're really, you know, it's to bring them to, you know, or maintain the, whatever the word is. <laughs> maintain the brand. The shine. Yeah, the shine. So your team uh, is relatively new to South by. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, have you learned anything new from working with South by? It's probably like the biggest event that I could probably name. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really, I think, the staple for how we work with other festivals going forward. Hmm. Um, they have a great team. They're a great business, a great, really strong brand. Um, what I, I guess what learning or what I've learned from working with them is really how large-scale production could be. Hmm. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting there. Yeah. Um, but really is kind of, as, as, as much as that sounds legacy, um, that maybe we're headed back to, but just in a different way. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions for Keith? All right, one thing I would love to, to dive in on is Sportico, for yeah. example. Sure. Sportico is a really interesting um, value prop where it's like, uh, it is sports media, but it's like focusing more in on like the businessy side of things. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about like how you run events around sports and stuff like that as well? Yep. Uh, this is, that was really my first jump into sports, which very interesting. Um, something I've always wanted to do and just, hap you know, just happened by chance. Mm -hmm. um, what was his name? Dick Glover, uh, who is, he founded Funny or Die. Uh, he was an ESPN exec. Um, he's heading up this Sportico initiative. Mm -hmm. We launched in, we well, launched that in March 2020, um, which is a pretty inopportune time to launch yeah. a business, <laughs> as we all know. Um, and they've absolutely crushed it. Um, so kudos to them um, in every regard. I mean, from access to talent to mm -hmm. their just straight up journalism. I mean, their events business, um, this guy, Nick, he's second to none. I mean, we've done everything from reporting in live, you know, in real time mm -hmm. to, um, you know, team valuations with the NBA, the NFL, oh, cool. the MLB, uh, creating infographics and sort of, they, they're really kind of a good example of that divide by two, divide by three business where they take mm -hmm. existing media and maximize revenue as a result. Yeah, so thinking about like different ways that you can splice and dice that content into different mediums yeah. as well. You mentioned the like access to talent. Um, so these brands and these events, you've had the chance to like interact with some like really cool folks. Like I think you mentioned Jerry Jones was um, yep. one there. Um, what, one like what is that like? And two, <laughs> how do you manage uh, to like how do you manage working with all these different like big personalities? Yeah, it's a I mean it's a challenge, just like every anything of that, like, yeah. at that level. Um, it's, yeah, it's different. I mean, you know, if someone's up for an award, they're a little more nervous than they are for, hmm. you know, something else. But, um, you know, the sports stuff, those guys, I guess to answer your question is, they're typically all awesome to work with. Yeah. Um, with the exception of a few, which is just like every other. Name them. Yeah, please. right. Yeah. I'll name them out loud right <laughs> <Okay>. now. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, it's, it's, a, it's, certainly, it's certainly a challenge and an adjustment, but not mm -hmm. one that's unattained. You know, it's not impossible. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's a, but it's a, it's, a, um, it's, it's a delicate balance at times. For sure, for sure. Uh, and oftentimes you forget that they're people, you know, like yeah, I fanboyed a couple times. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. <laughs> um, who was your favorite? Who was somebody that you like really fanboyed over? This is actually so one of my favorite stories. Um, maybe an unpopular one, but uh, uh -oh. <laughs> I was able to uh, show my mom uh, or like connect her and Kevin Costner on a, a Yellowstone thing. So oh, that's cool. Just to say hi. But uh, yeah, no, that was that was my favorite one because she was psyched about it. That's really <laughs> so, cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Maybe next year we'll get Kevin Costner at Uncon. Who knows? I don't know. It doesn't sound like he's coming back. Yeah, Sykes, <laughs> Sykes. Could we get Kevin Costner at Uncon next year? That's a yes. Okay, great, perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Keith. Yes, I really thank appreciate you guys. Appreciate you. it. Big round of applause for Keith, everybody.